People, today is your lucky day back-to-back -back YouTube videos. This one, I decided not to wait until Sunday to do the Mighty Morphin Power Ranger video. Today, Saturday, is supposed to be 88 degrees. That's going to be hot as hell. All right, so today is going to be a very interesting video. I might put the Power Ranger video on both YouTube channels. So you're getting a real treat because it's a Power Ranger video. And then I'm probably going to take two to three days off, take a two to three day break, and then jump back onto my sports channel to finish up the season finale of the wrestling series, and then to make some videos for the return of the NBA basketball season. Because pretty much that's what everybody wants to watch on TV is professional basketball. All right, now let's get to the best. This video is going to be called Sex Game D. Top 8 Best Power Ranger Fights in Power Ranger History. I changed the name up because if you're a Power Ranger fan, you got to show that you really are a Power Ranger fan. And yes, I wrote me a script on this. All right, coming in at number 8 is the Power Rangers meets the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Power Ranger in Space. Now, Power Ranger in Space only got two seasons. In my opinion, it should have got three seasons because it was a good television show. It was well received and it had a lot of potential. And it was like the final chapter of Zordon. The guy who discovered the five power morphers and recruited five teenagers every season to be Power Rangers. To fight the forces of darkness. This was like, at the time, huge. For years and years, we had comic books. And we wonder what would have happened if the concept ever happened. What would have happened if we had Aliens versus Predator, Robocop versus Terminator, Batman versus Superman, Goku versus Vegeta and Dragon Ball Z. But we got one in live action. For the Ninja Turtles were from the 1980s. The Power Rangers dominated the 1990s. And finally, we got to see two of the biggest icons and legends in pop culture history pop up the ninja turtles and the power rangers now in my opinion they should have made this into a three-part episode the first episode should have been the turtles um come from new york city to help the power rangers the second episode should have been the power rangers discovering that there's other superheroes and that that would have been to me when you talk about avengers to me that's kind of like television's interpretation of what the avengers would have been the third episode should have been the Ninja Turtles and the Power Rangers, you know, training each other. Like, they, why, how come y'all didn't let the Power Rangers meet um, Master Splinter? That would have been a good moment. That would have been a chance for Master Splinter to look at all the Power Rangers and say, I know your identities without you taking your helmets off. And then naming their names as they have their helmets on to find out how serious Master Splinter is. That would have been badass had they brought Master Splinter with the Ninja Turtles. Um, and to me, it's one of my most favorite moments of watching the show. It's spent off um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, The Next Mutation. Um, because they had a fifth Ninja Turtle named Ven Venus. And she was the only female Ninja Turtle that actually had magic powers. Like all the other four turtles, Michelangelo, Raphael, Donatello, Leonardo, they didn't have no powers. But Venus actually had all the magic powers. Um, so that would have been nice. And it was good to see the 80s and the 90s connect together. Coming in at number seven is Kimberly Outthinks Godar. Now, the Pink Ranger was funny. You know, Amy Jo Johnson was a good actress in television and film. And Power Rangers, she was in the prime of her career. And I, I love season two where they kidnapped her and they had it where she dressed up as Rita Raposa. And she outsmarted Godar, um, and she didn't fall under their powerful spell. Um, it was actually a funny episode, and it showed the range in her comedy as an actress. So this shows she could do more than just, you know, be a Power Ranger. Coming in at number six is Jason versus Tommy Part 1 and Part 2. Now, in Season 1, Jason was the Red Ranger, the leader of the Power Rangers for a season. And, of course... When Tommy popped up on the scene, played by actor and martial artist model Jason David Frank, who would later go on in his career to become an MMA fighter, um, popped up on the show like maybe 20 episodes into the series of season one. 
Because season one had like 60 episodes in total. And the fact that he showed up were doing the martial arts competition is for them to introduce a new Power Ranger. When they introduced a new Power Ranger, it was a shock to a lot of us. He became the Green Ranger. And the first fight he won. Then to have them fight for a second time uh, and Jason beat him in the rematch, which is, it, it's a part of Power Ranger history. You know, at the time in the 90s when television was really, you know, kicking ass. Coming in at number five is the Silver Ranger in love. Now, no countdown could ever be completed without a Power Ranger being in love. You know, all a lot of us go to sleep at night dreaming of being a superhero, whether it's from Marvel Comics, DC Comics, Star Wars, Star Trek, and then there's Power Rangers. Now, when Zayn became the Silver Ranger... And they decided to show in season two of Power Rangers in Space that the Red Space Power Ranger had a sister and the sister crushed on her. They had pictures of each other, which was actually kind of funny. And we got to see how we got to see how that whole thing unfold. And the fact that he showed up late and she got mad because he showed up late was kind of interesting. So we got to see how that would play out. Um, of course, he was the hero, he got to save the day, and of course, he got to get the, the girl. And to me, when they called him the Silver Ranger, this was kind of like they was trying to introduce a new Power Ranger, so they decided to go with the Silver Ranger, which had never been done before. He looked really cool, really badass. He reminded you of the Green Ranger, because he was always having to save some other Power Ranger. He reminded you of the White Ranger, because he always had the best weapons, the best robots, the best Megazords. And the Silver Ranger was like a combination of the Green Ranger and the White Ranger. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's, it's a disappointment that they did make a Season 3 of Power Rangers in Space. And he became the next big character to actually take over the group from time to time. Coming in at number four is the Red Space Power Rangers um, saves the day. Now, in the second half of Power Rangers in Space, Andrews, the Red Space Power Ranger, what makes his character unique is that he became like one of the first Power Rangers or second Power Rangers to actually have powers and abilities. Like he had telekinesis and he had a glider, his own spaceship. And the fact that he was from another planet and he had been a Power Ranger for 10 years and he fought the forces of darkness and supernatural monsters by himself without no help. And then the fact that he had to recruit people and what made it badass is that later he became the super mega Red Ranger where there's this episode where a little kid pushed his communicator and then all of a sudden he gets all buffed up, like he's all jacked, like a professional wrestler, and he got flying capabilities. It, this made him different from all the other Power Rangers. And he did that transformation for like about three episodes, even going into the season finale. And it was kind of interesting to see them make this story about a brother and sister dynamics. Like they took the idea from Star Wars where you got Luke Skywalker who doesn't even know who his father is and finds that he have a sister. And they took some elements for that and basically it's what if Star Wars all over again made into a television. Like think about it. You know, what if you had a red space Power Ranger in Star Wars, they would probably say he has the force on his side. So that's pretty much why that was interesting. Alright, coming in at number three is TJ's The Red Ranger. Now, in season two of Power Ranger Turbo, it was the greatest moment in history. For years and years, people were complaining, how come you don't get a black guy to become the leader of the Power Rangers? And when Tommy failed his mission and endangered the Power Rangers in the season finale of Power Rangers Turbo... He relinquished the power more for the TJ, and TJ went from being the Blue Ranger to becoming the leader of the Red Ranger. And he did, and the actor did pretty good playing the leader. And then going into season one of Power Rangers in Space, even though they already had a Red Ranger and he became the Blue Ranger, it was like the guy still had qualities of being an alpha. Like he had the best strategies, the best plans, and the way they wrote the script, even though he was the Blue Ranger... 
and they had the Red Space Power Ranger. He, in a way, if you really look at season one and season two of Power Rangers in Space, if you look at it very closely, he still was the alpha leader. Like, if you look at that whole series of Power Rangers in Space, he's actually giving the Red Ranger all the ideas and the Red Ranger is actually listening to his ideas where if you're already the Red Ranger, you should be the leader. So you get the sense that characters like the Blue Ranger and the Silver Ranger are more of a leader than the actual Red Space Power Ranger. The Red Space Power Ranger is more of a fighter. He's more of a warrior in combat where the Blue Ranger, TJ, when he was the Red Turbo Ranger back in Season 2 of Power Rangers Turbo... He embodies the qualities of what being a leader is because in season one, he learned from Tommy. So when Tommy gave him the power morpher and passed the torch to become the leader, that wasn't the first time we saw Tommy do that. We saw Tommy do that in season one of Power Rangers where he gave his power coin to Jason and Jason became the mega, the mega Red Ranger where they allowed the show Fusion and Power Rangers. So before we saw... Fusion and Dragon Ball Z, we actually saw it in Power Rangers. So that was a good moment. Coming in at number two, Tommy Oliver versus Godar. Now, Tommy became the second human in Power Ranger history without his powers to be the second human to beat Godar. You know, Godar's bigger, stronger, muscular, intimidating, and dangerous. And in order for Tommy to win the fight, he had to normally morph into a Power Ranger. You know, Tommy would always say, It's morphin' time! Dragon Sword! And then when he get his power taken from him, it's like now you're in a real challenge. It's like, how do you overcome the challenge that I've took your power from you? And when they play the theme song... Not only you feel the passion and the emotion coming from the character, it's like when the music come on, you are the character. Go Green Ranger, go. Go Green Ranger, go. And the fact that Jason David and Frank got to be on the show and basically take over the show and the ratings started to go up, because he was the first actor to basically make it cool to be a Power Ranger. Because the way he was doing stuff, nobody had never done. For him to have to come in and show other actors how to do martial arts was, was a plus. And for him to get his own theme song, and then to switch from that to other versions of himself was badass. Coming in at number one is the Green Ranger versus the White Ranger. Out of all the enemies that Tommy Oliver beat played by actor Jason David Frank, Lord Zed came up with an idea in season two of the Power Rangers. He got some uh, hair of Tommy and created a clone and gave him a power morpher and then gave us one of the best episodes in season two, season one or in season two, which there's three seasons, of Power Ranger history. The Green Ranger versus the White Ranger. I mean, it was badass that they had to break it up into two episodes. And the fact that no one could beat Tommy but Tommy himself. This goes down, in fact, as one of the best moments in Power Ranger history. So there you have it. These are my top eight best moments, best fights in Power Ranger history. Now, I only made part one of the video because I don't know how good or how bad it will get critical reception. If it's real good, it can get a part two or part three. If not, it just turns into a what if uh, into a one-off video. That means if it doesn't get very well received, then we don't make a part two and a part three. Today's going to be a scorcher. It's going to be hot as hell, and I don't want my cell phone to overheat and malfunction like it did um, 24 hours ago. And when I try to make copies, it destroys the second copy automatically because the cell phone can't record everything. Until then, peace.